beginnings on Monday night to help silence the LSU bats en route to winning two of three. We get set to get underway. Brown is ready. Alexa Galligani is ready. First pitch is a little bit low, and we are underway right on time. 6.02 p.m. Eastern. Jeremy Otter leading things back at our control room. Alicia Ocasio, I'm Kyle Crook. So glad that you can join us here in this midweek matchup. Galligani floats this out to shallow left. Second pitch hack. Otis is there for the opening out here on this Wednesday. Take a look at South Florida offensively, a team hitting just 247, but they're coming off a sweep of Memphis. You see Olivia Elliott, who steps to the plate in a big series against Memphis. The extra base hits picking up a tad over the weekend. They enter at 7-8 and eight in the American Athletic Conference. Gators after winning 2-3 of three against LSU, not just their fourth consecutive SEC series victory, but they're now 9-3, and three, just a game back of Tennessee at the top of the SEC standings. It's easy to look at Memphis and say, you know, they're at the bottom of the AAC. They should beat them, but when you look at the run production, they scored 31 runs over the course of those three games. And to put it in perspective for you, they scored 36 in all the other games before that weekend in conference. 1-1 one, one is pop fouls of their last three. 1-2 to Elliott, slammed in the air to center. Falby is as good as it gets out in center field. Boy, what a big weekend she had against LSU. A couple of catches, banging up against the wall in center field. The amount of space and real estate that she covers, as well as the balance that she provides at the top of this lineup. She's an all-star. Yeah, and we, and we spoke about her in the open. I, I called her a menace. Whatever she does, she's great at it. I mean, the anticipation that I felt watching that ball potentially get robbed. It was fun to see. Bailey Trapola, third Division I stop, formerly of Pittsburgh and Akron, stands in. See her numbers, 310, couple of homers. Aggressive approach early here from South Florida. They're looking for a possible big resume boosting win. They lost to the Gators earlier this year. That was on February 11th. These two teams always play opening weekend down in Tampa. Gators won 12 to three. That game did go a full seven innings. The 0-2 is out, ball one. I think the key to beating the Gators, or even being eye to eye with them, is to not give up so many free bases. There were five times that USF made errors, hit by pitches and balls. Line right to Reagan Walsh. So quick work. Mixing it really well, and we talked to Coach Carla Claudio on USF and she said that Peyton Dixon is just fearless and wanting to go inside, mix her pitches, her backdoor curve, her regular curve and jam these hitters. Well, it's hard to get Kendra Falby out these days. We showed you the big triple she had in the sixth inning. It was a four run six, Gators are down 5-1. Entering the frame. And this lineup continues to put fear in just about every team that they face, especially in the late innings. A couple of stand-in extra base hits for Fall, but you don't see that that often. Count even at two and two. I think that's what's so beautiful about having so many tools on the left side. You're able to stand in and also slap. Let's have three career home runs. Wax this on a line, left field, tailing, and this will be another extra base hit. Kendra Fulby cruises into second with a leadoff double. All of a sudden, Kendra Fulby is Barry Bond, stand in and slug. We saw the hits that she had just standing in, but here, just taking this ball on the opposite side of the plate, driving it over the left fielder's head, and. I mean, we've seen this Kendra Falby before right now, just using that momentum and doing what Kendra Falby does, taking second base. That's a whole different aspect now to this lineup. The versatility that Kendra Falby provides at the top, along with the speed that is present in the top two. Here's Skylar Wallace, who walked it off in an odd way, I'd say, on Monday night. Not what she had in mind and not what the average fan would expect, but Skylar Wallace at the plate, the winning run 60 feet away. She swung and missed at a ball in the dirt, and her hustle to first base on an overthrow, a drop third strike, brought in the game-winning run. 
Right now scuffling a little bit to start the month of April. It was the same to start the month of March, but she picked it up in a big way. And you see, even with some of the scuffling, 443 leads the SEC in batting average. And how scary is that? I mean, you look at the top five in batting average leaders, and you see four Gator heads at the very top. So when you talk about fear and an intimidation factor, it's definitely there for the Florida Gators. She has reached in 15 straight. There's two of 13 to start the month of April. But again, still leads in on base, runs scored per game, batting average, stolen bases, triples in the SEC. 2-2 two -two off the inner half, count full. You like these uh, uniforms, Alicia, debut of the all-black unis. You, you weren't a fan different. of the black unis when you played. <laughs> they are different. You know, they are a little bit different. I don't think I've ever seen the Gators in a full black uni. I mean, you have some white accents in there, but midnight black. Payoff is popped up along first. Mercy Tribal piece runs into Wallace, and the ball is dropped. Something probably is going to be called on Wallace here. It's going to be runner interference as she bumped Tribal Peace running on by. Ken Erickson came out to argue right away, but that call was overturned quickly by James Colsey. Not sure if there was ever an initial call made until James Colsey eventually made one. And well, Skylar Wallace, she's running in the baseline, so she didn't necessarily step out of the baseline to make contact with the first baseman either. No. From the first angle, it didn't necessarily look like she, oh, there you go. <laughs> so her shoulder got in the way of Tribal Peace's right elbow. If you're a batter and you're running to first base, your job is to get out of the way of the defender trying to make that play. So a good call by the umpire. First so out of the inning. That'll go down as a three unassisted scoring at home. I'm sure there's somebody that's scoring at home. Got to help them out. Brings in Corby Otis, who's been ultra consistent, to say the least. Hitting over 430. Takes a changeup strike from Dixon, 0 and 1. All the time that I've watched Corby Otis, she hits good balls great. But I've noticed she takes a lot of bad balls and just drives them, stays behind them, does a really great job of staying in her legs. Otis uncorks on a ball down the left field line, well foul. Drapola is in the DP spot. Otis flares this to second. Garcia Soto, a little hop, skip, and a jump, makes the grab for out number two. Said it earlier, but Peyton Dixon just jamming Skylar Wallace and Corby Otis on the last two at bats. We spoke about her fearlessness on the mound wanting to set batters up to try to do that and, and she succeeds numbers two and three batters brings in now Jocelyn Erickson who's had a incredible season so far 416 51 RBI with the table setters in front of hers had more than her fair share of opportunity to drive in runs and a count one and one you look up and down, at least the first five of this lineup, Alicia, you can say, okay, this person leads the SEC in this. The two-hitter leads in this. The three-hitter leads in this. Yeah, and I was, I was doing my research uh, before the game about the stats that they have leading in the SEC. When you have Kendra Falby leading in hits, then you have Corby Otis and Skylar Wallace leading in on-base percentage. But then you look at Jocelyn Erickson, I mean... Yanks this in the air to right field. Elliott goes back, has room in front of the warning track. So after that leadoff double, Peyton Dixon grew up in Sugarloaf, Pennsylvania. Takes an off-speed strike. Last year had a career season. Second team all American conference. But it's been a tough sledding this year in terms of the batting average. You see just over 200. They're making some adjustments with her in the box. Yanks this to second, and Williams had an error on Monday night against LSU. This one right between the wickets. I think sometimes we make errors and we don't get our feet set 
We try to look up before we have possession of that ball. Travel Peace just yanks this inside pitch. Mia gets her feet set, but kind of slams her glove down in a different place than the ball is. Gets away from her a little bit. She's in that flex position tonight, so not in the batting order, but just playing defensively at second. And they like that middle infield tandem between Wallace and Williams. Here's Alana Rivera. We talked about her at the top. Team's leader in a lot of different offensive categories. Eyes a strike from Brown. Alicia talked about just coming off an injury. That was during a tryout for the Puerto Rican national team. Expecting her to come back in about a year and a half. Came back a lot sooner. Racks this in the air to center. Falby back late. Oh, she's got it. Another sparkling gem. Falby on the long throw. Bernard could not hold on to it or else that would have been a double play on a throw from the warning track. Wow. Such athleticism from Kenja Falby. We talk about her hitting, but look at her in the outfield, just tracking this ball down. So athletic to grab it up in the air, but the throw, I mean, such a heads up play, throwing it back to first base. But just miss on the mark. Brings in Ryan Eigeman. That's another part of her game that doesn't necessarily get talked about a lot, but she has a plus-plus arm out in center field and a very accurate one at that, as you just saw. She is one of those outfielders as third base coach. That's a, a red light outfielder. If you're trying to round third and think about sending or stopping... Just don't. <laughs> you don't when Kendra Falby has it. Just don't. Eigenman lines this to center field, base hit. Falby over to cut it off on a slide. First and second for the Bulls here with one out. And that's the Bulls' first hit. And a good job by Eigenman going after Ava Brown early right now so that she doesn't try to deceive you late in the count. We talked about her different speeds. That rise ball, that screw, change up off speed. A really good job by Eigenman just staying through this one, not trying to do too much and driving it back up the middle. Sam Walls is now pinch running at second base. Runs at a premium, of course, against Ava Brown. So Ken Erickson will go to the lineup card early in pinch run for Marissa Travel Piece. Brings it in Dania Brooks. First start at third tonight since March 24th. Some changes in Ken Erickson's lineup. Takes strike one. A lot of times you'll see coaches wait till the runner is in scoring position to make that change so that you don't waste a substitution. Brooks lines this over Wallace. Walls had to hold up as it's fielded by Otis. Quickly gets it in. Back-to-back -back base hits against Brown and the Bulls have them loaded here in the second. Keegan Rothrock and Ava Brown. So she has dealt with primarily a freshman rotation and pitched to an ERA under two, which is 14th best in the country. Kathy Garcia Soto now with the bases loaded, infield in, just one out. First toss, high and away. When you come in as a coach, it's almost like coming in with a clean slate when you have those three freshmen and transfer, no vet pitchers to work with. She's done a great job this far, I think. This Florida staff has to limit those free passes and those walks, as we thought saw this weekend with Rothrock giving up that leadoff walk, turning to a run for the LSU Tigers. Sophomore Kathy Garcia Soto swings away and misses on 2-0. One of your teammates of the Puerto Rican national team, one of the more loudest players on this group. Super energetic. Yeah, and that's what I love about her. I mean, she's always bringing the energy. She's always bringing excitement. But right now, you can see how intense she is. She's also determined. And, and one thing that's so special about her is that she's a switch hitter. Caught on a miss. Goes down on strike. So Brown picks up a big strikeout. Her first K of her start after back-to-back -back singles. Man, this is such a big strikeout by Ava Brown, throwing that change up through the middle of the zone. 
Kathy Garcia just cannot get behind it in a big out to set the tone, even with bases loaded. Now it's a number nine batter, Jordan Cadlub. Swings through strike one. Changeup seems to be that go-to out pitch for Ava Brown. See Cadlub's numbers. The 0-1 bounces in, nice stop by Erickson. So an E4 started the inning. And after a fly out to center, it's been single, single, and now a strikeout. So two gone, and the ball is trying to capitalize in the second. This might do it. Fly ball out to center field. Can of corn for Kendra Fulby. He made another sparkling play in this ball game, slamming into the wall. Coming up in two midweeks towards the end of the year. Reagan Walsh leads it off against Peyton Dixon. Pretty solid Alicia after giving up that leadoff double from Kendra Falby after the fact, sitting down Wallace, Otis, and Erickson in order for Dixon. Yeah, I thought that was a great outing by her in the first inning. When you have stat leaders like Skylar Wallace and, and Corby Otis and you're able to just jam them. So tough hitting a lefty pitcher who just zips that curveball across the plate. Walsh zips a ball foul. A you long... want to talk about red hot <laughs> right now? That's Reagan Walsh. Right? Third in the SEC with home runs. I feel like she flies under the radar sometimes, but has a lot of production for this Florida Gator softball team. Part of this lineup lengthening out a bit in terms of its production. 2-1 on its way is pop foul behind home. Third in home runs, third in slugging in the SEC. He's already put up career numbers. Home runs, 13 this year, 46 RBI. It was all a confidence issue. Talk to any of the coaches on the Florida staff. Has a different swagger about her this year. Reaches for this on the off speed to Garcia Soto. One up, one down. We talk about Peyton Dixon and her curveball zipping through the plate, but that changeup just falling off the table. Reagan Walsh just can't get enough behind it to get it through the infield. Brings in Bailey Goddard. And that hit her. Well, that's familiar territory for Bailey Goddard. That in her career is the 46th time she's been hit that ties Bailey Castro for fifth most in program history. Good thing she has all that armor on, <laughs> that Evo Shield to protect her. And here's now Katie Kistler. Look at South Florida, the years after Georgina Cork trying to find that stabilization inside their staff. Georgina Cork, not just one of the best pitchers in South Florida history, but in recent memory, one of the best pitchers in the country. Electric stuff. Pitched the majority of the innings in conference play in big games like this. And they found a, a pretty good top two with Peyton Dixon and Bell Sarja. Dixon, the reigning American Athletic Conference Pitcher of the Week. What I loved about, you know, I, I don't love to face Georgina Corrick, but I think what makes her so great, one, she hits her spots phenomenally, but she also has an X factor about her on the mound. Like, she doesn't care. She just slings that thing and gets it to where it needs to go, but also with dominant spin. And she still does that at the pro level. I remember in a, a regional, I think it was 2022, might have been 2021, but it was a one nothing Gator win. Georgina Cork had pitched that one, and there were a lot of nail biters when Cork came into this ballpark, especially in the postseason. And Dixon taking that mantle as the ace, over 225 career innings, about a 1 4 ERA in her career. Dealt with injuries last year, missed the first five weeks, missed five weeks in conference play with an upper body injury. Ball three to Kistler. Biggest win this year for USF. They came opening weekend. 
against Michigan, a team that the Gators lost to twice. Payoff is golfed in the air, and foul right. Tribal Peace makes the catch, and Kistler's retired. Second out of the inning brings in Ava Brown. And Kistler just tried to get under that one a little bit too much. We talk about pitchers in this game. I think Peyton Dixon also has that X factor when she steps on the mound. She just has such a veteran poise about her. And such great composure. You never know what a pitcher's thinking when they don't show their emotion. I like to call that a poker face. And just a, a good, vast repertoire with that backdoor curve, change, rise. Another off speed, wanders in for strike two. Brown quickly down in the count. Dixon only pitched a third of an inning against Florida on February 11th, allowed an earned run, getting just one out. And down on three pitches is Ava Brown. Peyton. The, the thunderstorms at three o'clock every day out yeah. here in Florida. Got to get the black uniforms out now before the heat really comes. More on that as leading off here, Alexa Galligani, top of the Bulls lineup. This is the fifth black jersey in team history. Got that note from Gators uniform tracker on Twitter. As time is called. There's a loose towel, I think, on the warning track in the right field corner. Katie Kissler doing some maintenance over there. Gave Coach, gave coach Erickson. Oh, pom-pom. Yeah. Young fan. <laughs> Love when little fans come to support the Gators. Seeing these Gators on the field, knowing that she can also be on the field with them. She puts her mind to it one day. And I love the uniform. She came prepared with the pom-poms and the <laughs> uniform. Makes me think we need some cheerleaders at the softball field instead of basketball. The 2 outside. I saw a fan in the LSU series brought the glove to the ballpark and would you know it made a catch on, on a foul ball using the glove because you just never know. Brown has 1K already. This is a waste pitch in the dirt, 2-2. Two and two. And back to the uniforms, Kyle. We haven't seen a lot of black unis, like you said, this being the fifth one. I had one in my career, but had a little bit of blue in it. I'd love to see them mix up. 2-2, two -two, looping liner in front of Otis. Into left, Galligani gives the Bulls their third hit. They're seeing it really well right now. Lead-off base knock, that's the second consecutive lead-off base runner for USF. Last inning gave the Gators a run for their money with the bases loaded. Brings in now Olivia Elliott, former UCF Knight. Strike one. I'm surprised they're not going to a sacrifice punt just to get a run across right now. Elliott does have four successful sacrifices this year. Right now you look at it, the heart of their order coming up here. Reagan Walsh, nice diving stop on the line drive, throws to first. Not in time, almost getting the double play on a smoke line drive along third. And that is why we call it the hot corner. Elliott just driving this pitch, and Reagan so athletic going over her shoulder to make that backhand grab. Really heads up play by trying to go back to first with the pickoff. Unsuccessful, but a really great out for the Florida Gators. Here's Bailey Drapola. Walsh making that adjustment from second to third, so much closer to home plate defensively this year as opposed to last with Mia Williams coming in this year as a freshman, taking over the everyday second base spot. Lasered foul, quickly 0-2. We've typically seen Ariel Kowalewski over at third base. Hasn't had a ton of production in conference. Coach Walton making that switch, putting Reagan Walsh at three. Like you said, that, that alignment with Mia Williams at second base and Skylar Wallace in the middle infield. Oh, 
Bailey Tripola started her career at Akron and went to Pitt, a senior from Brookfield, Ohio. One, two, almost got her. Count even now, three years at Pitt. Known for her patient approach. Led Pitt in walks last year. Right past the originator into center. Falby's got it. Station is station for Galligani. And again, a little rally mounting here for USF. It's already their fourth hit. And what I love about this team right now is they're just piecing up the ball, keeping it easy. Chipola right here gets in her back leg to drive this pitch low in the zone right through the middle. And that's how they've been getting hits. Driving it through the middle, keeping it simple, hitting line drives. Is it just a case of they're comfortable? Ava Brown is hitting too much of the plate. What are you seeing so far from Ava Brown and why South Florida's had so much success? Well, you know, I think that pitch was a little bit too much over the plate, but when you talk about USF and what they just did this past weekend, how many runs they've scored, you gotta talk about their confidence and the momentum that they have coming into this game. Marissa Tribal piece swings through strike one on the off speed. They scored 12 runs in game one, 10 in game two, nine in game three against Memphis. That's, that's hard to do for one game, but when you talk about how many runs that they scored, three consecutive games, I mean, you gotta feel good stepping into the box knowing you just dominated another team in your conference. That was their first series victory within American Athletic Conference play. They had, had a, a similar pattern in their previous series of winning game one and losing games two and three. Big one, two. Arch in the air, left field. Otis was first step in. Sashay's back for the second out. Well, you can't talk about South Florida without talking about the head man. That is Ken Erickson. Almost three decades as head coach, over a thousand wins. Former head coach of Team USA, 15 NCAA tournaments, went to the World Series in 2012. The winningest coach in South Florida history that goes for all sports. Snap toss, Erickson caught the runner, napping, and that's the final out. That cannon. To end the top half of the third, here's now Brooke Bernard in the nine spot, seeing her first start at first this year. So her first Gators start over the weekend against LSU. And a big run scoring double against the Tigers in game two of the series. That was the game the Gators lost. Bernard had an RBI double in the sixth against the Tigers to put, LS, put the Gators up one, and then LSU came back to score a lone run in the seventh, eventually going on to win in extras. Bernard pops this up to short Alana Rivera. When you do what you're supposed to do, have a good at bat, in pinch hit opportunities and, and earn those at bats. I mean, that, that's what happens. You see Brooke Bernard today with her first start at first base because she earned those at bats by coming out and doing her job in the box. Here's Kendra Falby who's turned into a slugger. Last three <laughs> hits, triple, double, double. Doubled in the first to the left field corner. She's seeing it like a beach ball right now. Dixon's 0-1. Found this out today, too. Kendra Falby is in charge of picking the uniform combinations for every single game. That started last year. Tim Walton likes Kendra's fashion sense. <laughs> Said she has swag. 1-1 one, one is popped up. Who's got this one? And it's Shania Brooks coming down from third. That's a tough play to make. That ball sky high. Having to get under it, find it. Not a lot of wind today, but when that ball is, is bright yellow and the sky is pretty bright, it's, it's hard to get under. And the Gators coming off that excitement of Monday night. 
perhaps taking a little bit longer to get going. And I you know, also give credit to Peyton Dixon. She's put up great numbers this year. And she's a great pitcher coming from the left side. And the Gators is taking a little bit to adjust. And you've got to tip your cap to her this far. I mean, she's popped people up with her curveball, got people to swing over her, her changeup to roll over and, and get a ground ball. I mean, when you have tools and you're just fearless and you're able to facilitate those pitches and have confidence in them, it just changes the trajectory of, of who you are on the mound. Pitch to just under a two ERA last year. Wallace goes down on strikes. Peyton Dixon is dealing. Ryan Eigeman, Dania Brooks, ball one. And that's the name of the game. I mean, people are gonna get hits. People are gonna get walked. Might even hit a batter, but they have the mental toughness to be able to get out of a jam, especially as a freshman with the help of a, a strong arm behind the plate in Jocelyn Erickson. Came into the day, Erickson, having thrown out 10 base runners. Look at the latest Softball America rankings. They rank each position. She is the top ranked catcher in the country. Boy, that's a big loss for Oklahoma. Imagine putting her in that lineup with her bat and that arm behind home plate just completely eliminates the run game. Scared over at first base. Strike two. Another change up from Ava Brown. And I'll tell you, as a pitcher, having a catcher who's so sure handed, has a great glove, makes the world of a difference when you're trying to throw through the zone, especially to frame pitches. Whacked on a line, left center. Falby is over there in plenty of time. Falby the flash has all that speed. It's hard to get one in the gap. Let's go back to how the last inning ended for the Bulls at the plate in the top of the third. Jocelyn Erickson could see it at the corner of her eye from the knees. And you know what makes that so seamless is Jocelyn Erickson is a lefty catcher. You don't see that often, but when you have a lefty catcher behind the base, and it gives her a tunnel to throw to first base so much quicker than it would be for a right-handed catcher to turn her body and make that throw. Yeah, because you have to twist all the way around, face the bag, as opposed to just whipping that arm across the body. Yeah, it's like a tell, but when you are when you have Jocelyn Erickson at lefty, all she has to do is whip back and throw that cannon. Ryan Eigeman ahead of the count, two and one. And we've talked about this in past broadcasts, but you actually prefer to throw to, as a right-handed pitcher, throw to a lefty catcher, which is rare. But you threw to Janelle Wheaton in your time here. Yeah, and don't get me wrong, I loved pitching to Aubrey Monroe, but when I started to develop that off-speed drop and throw it on the outside corner, that left-handed catcher in Janelle Wheaton, she was able to just take her glove and frame it with the flick of a wrist. So, it made my job a lot easier. Strike three. Outer half, Eigenman does not like the call, and Ava Brown starting to cruise a little bit here. That's her second strikeout. It's taken Ava Brown a little bit to get her feet wet in this game, but like I just said, that lefty catcher and Jocelyn Erickson framing this pitch that might have been in the river, still a great pitch by Ava, but when you have a great catcher behind the plate, it helps you out as a pitcher. Brings in now Dania Brooks. Brooks is the daughter of Brooks Ring of Honor member Derek Brooks, great linebacker, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Jam job roller to Mia Williams at second, easy play this time. And for the second time in her start, Ava Brown is the will head back into American Athletic Conference play this weekend. Big three game set against Wichita State, picked to win the league. As Ken Erickson comes out of the dugout, wants a word with James Colsey. Veteran head coach brings out the uh, lineup card. Longtime head coach of Team USA. Had the, the honor of losing to him as head coach with <laughs> Team Puerto Rico. 2011 to 2021, his last run was the Tokyo Olympics, which eventually was played because of the pandemic in 2021. 
Played on the South Florida baseball team in the early to mid 80s. As Otis takes quickly two in a row in the zone, 0 2. Assisted by Carla Claudio Rivera, who we got a chance to talk to yesterday, who's a legend in Puerto Rico. Yeah, Carla, Carla actually has a mural of her in Puerto Rico. That Your was teammate as well on the senior my national team. My teammate, or my captain, actually. El Capitan. Two-way player, played for Ken Erickson. Otis lasers this foul. Was a grad assistant in 2019 on Tim Walton's staff. Learned just about everything she knows in terms of the teaching and coaching realm of the sport from Coach Walton. Said once she saw Tim Walton's way, she doesn't want to do it any other way. She's a future <laughs> head coach one day, that's for sure. Off speed relate. just missed, Alicia. Almost a strikeout. Oh, a really good, really good pitch down in the zone. But I, I can relate to that. Coach Wallen is just so meticulous about, about everything and we do things a hundred times just to make sure we do it right. There's the strikeout. Peyton Dixon rings up Corby Otis. Number six is rocking and rolling. If not on the changeup, low and out on this back door. Such a pretty pitch. You can see the spin. It starts in the lefty batter's box, comes across and clips the plate, gets Corby Otis running back to the dugout. Brings in Jocelyn Erickson. One gone base is clear. Got to give you guys a shout out. Team Puerto Rico, yourself, Carla. Won silver this fall at the Pan Am Games. Highest finish for Team Puerto Rico. So got to give you guys your flowers there. I appreciate Big that. Big fall. I do, I do. It was a very emotional. Anytime we win a medal, it's it's extremely emotional. But You've won five total now, correct? You and Carla? We have, we have. It's, it's been a great ride. Um, but, you know, I, I'm just honored to be her teammate. Um, she's led this squad for so long. And, uh, you know, I look up to her as captain. And, and, and it's great that the Bulls get a chance to, to be under her. And, and learn from her and be teammates with her as well because we have Kathy Garcia and then yep. Camille as well, who's also on the Puerto Rican national team. Jocelyn Erickson walks. <laughs> See Carla in the background <laughs> sitting on that bucket right there. That's who we're talking about. Here's Reagan Walsh now. Gators have a base runner. First one drops in for a strike. Got Reagan Walsh to roll over on a changeup late in her at bat last time. And she's expanded the areas where she can get hits. Saw her a couple times in the LSU series really expand her zone on outside pitches, drive them the other way. She reminds me a lot of, of Corby Otis. I think they favor her, favor each other in a way that they can hit bad balls really well. And I say bad balls, just pitches a little bit more out of the zone and get behind the ball with her barrel. Off speed, wicked spin off the very end of the bat. Dixon boots it. That one had crazy amounts of spin. <laughs> hit off the very top of the bat. And just as I say, she gets behind balls very well. Here she is out in front. Like you said, crazy spin, but I think where Peyton Dixon went wrong as she did not get her web exposed to the ball. Her, her web was closed, her glove was closed, so she wasn't even allowing the ball to roll into her glove. And step number one, that's what your glove's for. <laughs> Bailey Goddard, early big spot. Gators, second hit. Will be officially a hit for Reagan Walsh. It all looks the same in the box score after the game. Let's go, 
Bailey Goddard having dealt with injuries the last couple of years, in and out as the starter. Started the year platooning out and right with Katie Kistler. Head in the count, two and one. One of the true leaders of this team. He's had some big hits come up, put up really good numbers in pinch hit spots in SEC play, which is one of the hardest things to do in the sport, come off the bench and hit. It's extremely hard. I mean, you've got to stay in tune each and every game, even though you're not physically moving and getting on the field each and every time. She does a great job at staying in tune. I mean, take advantage of each opportunity that she's granted. Now did Goddard lean out a little bit? James Colsey says hit by pitch. They appeal to third. Robert Guest says there was no swing. And Ken Erickson's going to ask the same question that I have asked. They're going to look and see if Goddard made an attempt to get out of the way or maybe leaned into the zone. So we will get the call. Robert Guest is the man with the microphone. So it is upheld. And Goddard was in the midst of a swing, it looked like. So it was a normal motion. At first, it just looked a little bit awkward, but on replay, it looks to be the right call. Now the Gators trying to find a way to capitalize. They have the bases loaded for Katie Kistler. Crowd cheering for the Gators as they have bases loaded in the midnight black unis. You used to say, Alicia, ducks on the pond. Was that a saying that you had? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you never but said that? But it is that? a saying. It is a saying. How much older are you than me again? <laughs> okay. Well, that's, that's hurtful. 3-0. and oh. Well, one pitch away from bringing one of those ducks across. Swimming to home plate. Erickson at third. So Dixon all of a sudden has lost the zone. I have to think red light here for Kistler. And takes right down center. It takes maturity to be able to stay composed in situations like this, especially when you're facing a top 10 component with bases loaded behind in the count. Whips this foul. So we had the full go on 3-1, three, 3-2, one, three, one out. If I'm picking Peyton Dixon, I'm, I'm staying low in the zone to try to induce a ground ball, hopefully roll up a double play to get out of this inning. And a payoff is popped up right towards us. Alicia, you bring your glove? It's in the car. Okay, well, we'll have it to doesn't do any good right. in there. Nice. Kistler just swinging so big right now, trying to get the ball out of the infield. If she does get the ball to the outfield in a decent spot, that scores a run, gives Kistler a sack fly. Payoff part two. Rolled over foul. Do you shorten up your swing a little bit considering the situation? Bases loaded, less than two outs, just need to get the ball in the outfield. Do you shorten things up, change anything in your approach? Well, you know, everyone has a different two-strike approach. I probably would do so, just try to get one through the middle. But some people shorten up, some people go to no stride. Rolled sharply off the glove of Tribal Peace at first. Erickson scores. Coming in is Walsh in headlong. And two runs in as Katie Kistler comes through. And the Gators up two zip in the fourth. And Kistler doing Kistler things, getting around this inside pitch, through the legs of Tribal Peace, scoring Jocelyn Erickson. And I mean, we talk about giving up free passes, Florida Gators and Katie Kistler taking full advantage of that, really good at bat, driving it to 3-2 and staying on it to get the first two RBIs of the game. Still just one out, Bailey got her down to third. Here's now Ava Brown. Swings away, drives one to center. Cadlove goes back. This should get in a run. Cadlove makes the catch. Got her tags from third in standing up. And Ava Brown helps her own cause, gets the job done with a sack fly. 
That's her third sack fly of the year. Gators up 3 0. That's textbook. I mean, you have less than two outs running around third. Your job is to poke one through to hopefully get this sack. Good job by Ava Brown, the, the two way phenom. So the Gators able to break through against Cadlub after getting the bases loaded with one out. Two run single from Kistler and a sack five fly from Brown. And Gators looking for more production from seven, eight, and nine in the lineup. And get it here in this inning as Brooke Bernard now to the plate, one, one count. This being her first start, she should feel some weight lifted off her shoulders a little bit, knowing that the score is 3 0 and they have a little bit of insurance. Shortens up. Say she pulled back. Ball two. Brooke Bernard, native of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. Started her career at Ole Miss. Played one season there. Ripped on the ground, fell. Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, about four hours from Gainesville, 260 miles. Had a big series against the Gators last year in late April. Helped the Rebels to their first win over Florida and Gainesville since 2014. Take strike three outside corner, so Dixon battles back. Second of Kathy Garcia Soto takes the first pitch strike. As everybody on this broadcast team knows, I don't get out of my apartment often, so I don't see the sun a whole lot. <laughs> That's sad, Kyle. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. Garcia Soto is 0 for 1, shortens the bunt, and comes up empty for strike two. Kathy Garcia Soto striking out her last at bat, going to a bun to hopefully try something to first base side. The alignment with Brooke Bernard playing a little bit further back than normal right now. Kathy trying to take advantage. Garcia Soto, Alicia, like you mentioned, she's a switch hitter, and this is her more power hitting side of the plate, the right side. The short game is more when she hits on the left side. Don't see a whole lot of switch hitters in softball. More common in the baseball game. Way more common in baseball. It's almost, it's almost non-existent in softball, but Kathy Garcia, like you said, more power on the right side. Tries to get the contact on the left side, but did have a double standing in this past weekend over Memphis. On the left side, standing in. Last year was the co-defensive player of the year in a breakout freshman year in the American Athletic Conference. Was all second team, all rookie team. First career home run was a walk-off against number nine, Texas. Talk about Kathy and how she's a switch hitter, so electric. So good on defense, that co-defensive player of the year. We asked her what her relationship was with Alana Rivera. I'm sorry, asked Coach Claudio. Said that Alana's taken her under her wing defensively. Got jammed, softly line fell. It's a nice dynamic in that middle infield between Alana Rivera and Kathy Garcia Soto. Kathy just an athlete. I mean, she plays third base as well, can play in the outfield too. And that hit her. Garcia Soto trying to fire up her team as she runs down to first. This one just clips her on the inside corner. Nice movement by Ava Brown, but just a little bit too much. And that is Kathy's hitting box. So she takes full advantage of that. and. Talk about the electricity that she has and provides, and like you said, trying to cheer up her teammates a little bit. Start a rally. Jordan Cadlub swings through strike one. Third leadoff base runner for South Florida tonight. Cadlub 0 for 1, flew out to center her first time. Snap toss again to first, look out. Garcia Soto is back. But if you're a base runner, beware. You gotta have fast switch muscles over there, <laughs> be able to dive back in a hurry. 
That side-eye vision from Jocelyn Erickson is special. Bunt popped up, and Brown will let that roll foul. Smart play. It's still a close ball game, so I understand Cadlove trying to go to that sack bunt to get Kathy over and try to chip away. You can't hit a, a three-run bomb to time the game with only run runner on base. Wow, that was a tongue twister. <laughs> Best bunter on the team, nine sacrifices this year with two strikes, swings away, and that's strike three. Third K for Ava Brown. And there's the opening out as the lineup turns back over to Alexa Galligani. And just pulls the string on this changeup. I mean, it just falls off the table. Cadillac cannot but get behind it, but this is not unfamiliar territory for Ava Brown. The Bulls did punch back in innings two and three. Getting bases loaded, having some runners on, getting some hits, but the Gator is able to get out of this. Almost took out her teammate on that swing. Olivia Elliott on deck had to do a salsa dance to get out of the way of that one. Wax this on a line, foul. Galligani singled in the third. That was part of two singles in that inning. And that is the missing piece for a pitching staff that's very solid for USF. Can they get enough offensively to get back to a regional this year? Missed out last season. A look to avoid missing back-to-back -back regionals for the first time since 2011. They've made nine of the last 11 NCAA tournaments. Two and two. I like to call that a, a pitcher's pitch. Talk about her movement, that screwball going outside. Just missed it over the white, the chalk line. A really great eye by Galligani. Brown lets it fly. And that got Galligani right on the hand. That can't feel good. What is that, four hit by pitches this game? Correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. We've had three. Coming in the last two half innings. That one right on the front hand. This is a missed spot by Ava Brown. You see Jocelyn Erickson set up on the outside corner. Ava Brown just yanks this pitch up and in, and Gallagheny trying to protect herself but can't get out of the way. So now first and second, Olivia Elliott coming to the plate. You get the sense if there's going to be a rally here, it's got to come pretty soon. Running out of outs for the Bulls. Elliott is 0 for 2, has flown out to center, lined out sharply to Walsh at third. Yeah. 0 for 2, but still swinging it. It's a matter of time for Elliott up in the lineup to make good contact and poke something through for her team. I mean, if, like you said, if there's any time, it's now. Chelsea Dobbins comes. All these series grow more and more in importance. Gonna have to get past the arm of Lauren Krings at Missouri. Looping liner, shallow left, tips in in front of Otis. Garcia Soto stops at third, and the Bulls, for a second time in this game, have the bases loaded. We spoke about Elliott. I mean, she was putting her bat behind the ball in her previous at-bats, but this one finally finding green and getting down in order to move every runner 60 feet. Infield is going to be in. Middle infielders now drift back a touch, possibly for a ground ball double play. Bailey Drapola has singled already. Chelsea Dobbins is outside that dugout. <laughs> And I think Tripola 250 with the bases loaded this season. It's the one hit came in the third. Roth Rocks 1-0. And I love how they went to Roth Rock. I mean. You have these freshmen that are taking the mound.
putting them in situations to be battle tested is going to show their character down the road, show what they can do and, and work on their mental toughness. I mean, when you talk about a team who's hitting so well and, and also pitching well, but giving them an opportunity to compete in the postseason, you've got to be able to see what these freshmen are capable of and let them work through jams and come in in different situations to make them feel confident down the road. Line over Wallace into left field. That'll bring in Garcia Soto. And another run will come in for the Bulls as Galagani skates across and a two-run single from Bailey Trapola. And it's now a brand new ball game. It's three to two in the fifth. This pitch low in the zone. Missed over the plate. Japola is all over it. Drives this pitch into left center field. I mean, we saw it last at bat on that changeup by Ava. She's just so great at going low in the zone and comes up big for her team. Now trailing behind one run. Impressive offensive display from the South Florida team. They've doubled up the Gators in hits and add another fair ball down the right field line as Tribal Peace comes through. One run in for the Bulls and the game is tied on the RBI double from Marissa Tribal Peace. We're all even here in the fifth inning. We talk about being battle tested right now. Rothrock is getting battle tested. How did Marissa Tribal Peace hit this ball at her head? I don't know, but she did it. And a great piece to the right field line to get another RBI. Now USF tied with the Florida Gators, and I love the energy. Gators have won the last 27 meetings. Still just one out, infield in now, with second and third. Alana Rivera takes high and in. And you can sense they have a whole different confidence as a lineup after the weekend where they swept Memphis and put up crooked numbers in all three games. Two and oh. It's almost as if they were hoping Rothrock would come in at some point. Rothrock has pitched a lot of Wednesday series games, so it'd be easy to prepare for her. That clipped her. So since Rothrock has come in, two run single, an RBI double, and a hit by. I still can't get over Tribal Pieces. Good piece of hitting to right field on that rise ball. Typically, you'll see people swinging through that rise ball up in the zone by Rothrock. The tribal piece needed that hit in the worst way. Came in hitting 204, then made some adjustments to her swing. It's her third double of the year. She stands at second. That double tied the game at three. Big at bat here for Ryan Eigeman. Sprays this foul. And the momentum is on. USF side right now with one out. The Gators three runs in the bottom of the fourth, quickly answer with three runs here in the top of the fifth, and the ball's not done. Ball three, one pitch out of the zone from forcing in the go-ahead run. Count full. The highs and lows of this sport. Gators coming off the celebration of Monday night. And here they are. Hard fought game against South Florida. Next foul back to the screen. Both teams coming off a, a great series win and a sweep with USF. But it doesn't matter the opponent that you're facing. You cannot get complacent. USF doesn't care about the ranking right now. They're just getting bat to ball, and that's really the name of the game. And a payoff. Off the very end of the bat, Erickson can't get to it. Oh, so close. Can imagine how hard it is to run with all that gear on. <laughs> The 
The arsenal for Roth Rock. Rise, screw, curve, and change. What does she go to here on 3-2? Bases loaded. Swing and a miss. Rears back, gets the K, and a big one at that. Now two outs, base is still loaded. It's up to Tania Brooks. Rothrock struggling to find her footing early in this inning, but a great screwball in the inside corner, finding her command for a big out. Now two down for the Florida Gators. Brooks has singled, almost hit by a pitch there, ball one. I think Brooks wants to keep her arms today. Brooks gets a piece quickly, 0-2. Rothrock got the start against South Florida on February 11th, went a complete game, did allow seven hits that day, struck out seven. 1-1 one, one on its way. Saw a relief appearance on Sunday against LSU. And another three ball count. Northrop just trying to locate that curve ball. A little bit too wide and a little bit too high in the zone. A called strike. Finding a way on all three ball counts. Ken Erickson saying that one was low at third base. Runners will get a jump. 3 2, two out. Big pitch. Brooks stays alive. Three, two. Again, foul back. Rock just trying to keep her off balance. Mixing both sides of the plate with that curveball early now. Trying to clip the inner part of the plate, get her to swing and miss or jam. Ball four, and South Florida comes from three runs down. A four spot in the fifth to take a 4-3 lead as Bailey Trapola scores. Threw a rise ball. Just meant that she had so much confidence in that pitch, but Brooks, a really good hold and really great discipline at the plate in that at bat to hold up and, and give her team the lead. Kathy Garcia Soto started this inning. The Bulls have officially batted around. She was hit by a pitch to start this frame. Rothrock battling back, ball and two strikes. Gators on the flip side will have the top of their lineup. In the bottom of the fifth. Hit her again, count full. So another full count with two outs. These Florida pitchers just have to, or with their heartbeat a little bit, try to hit the spot instead of trying to do too much. Popped up, does it stay in play? No. Oftentimes as a pitcher, when you're in high pressure situations, it's easy to get tense. It's easy to try to force the ball to where you need it to go. That's when you got to rely on your mechanics and your spin to remain deceptive instead of trying to throw too hard. Or That's ball four. Another run comes in for the Bulls as Tribal Peace touches home. 
And a five-run inning, it's now 5-3. Back-to-back bases loaded walks. And the carousel keeps moving here in the fifth inning. My question is, who do you go to after taking Ava Brown out of the game, putting your ace, Keegan Rothrock, and you have Olivia Miller. You have Wooten, the graduate transfer. And the bulk of the innings have come from their two freshmen the Gators have thrown tonight. Olivia Miller has thrown the third most innings at 24. Mackenzie Wooten has just thrown two and two thirds innings this year. So Rothrock, far and away, has thrown the most innings. 135 entering the day, and Ava Brown just south of 80. 0 2 pitch, five runs in in the frame. In the air. This could end the inning. Wallace, a long run. Turns the glove over, but could not hold on. Up against the sidewall. Had to readjust that glove and just could not snag it. What a long run by Skylar Wallace. I mean, ending near the left field corner to get that ball and, and nearly had it, but like you said, switched her glove over just a little bit. I think that play would have helped a lot. Get out of this inning. Rolled into center field, base hit. One run scores as the number nine batter, Jordan Cadlop, continues this offensive party. An RBI single, it's now 6-3 Bulls. We'll talk about that last play with Skyler Wallace. That would have ended the inning, but Cadlop taking this missed pitch over the plate, driving it right back up the middle. USF is hot right now and is doing some damage. Well, Keegan Rothrock's stay is just over 2-6 ERA. Two outs, base is still loaded. Gators go to the lefty, first pitch, slow roller to the hole, it's short. Wallace is able to make that long throw on to first, but the Bulls have a six-run frame. They've lost once again, top of their lineup here in the home fifth, and Kendra Falby will lead it off against Peyton Dixon. Bulls 13-60 and 60 all time against the Gators, lost 27 straight. One thing I'll say is don't count this Florida offense out. You definitely can, especially with, with Kenja Falby on the, in the box right now with what she did this past weekend. But you also can't count out USF. What a great time to get your bats going halfway through conference play. Coming off a great sweep. And with Peyton Dixon on the mound, Three isn't a huge lead, but it gives you some confidence going into this inning with some insurance runs. Falby pops up, an off-speed delivery to third. Grab made by Tania Brooks for out number one. So one up, one down, brings in Skylar Wallace, who's looking to get going. She's 0 for 2. Last win for the Bulls, May 20th of 2012 against the Gators. That was a one nothing victory in the Gainesville Regional. Last time they beat the Gators, they went to the World Series. Also beat them in March of that year as well. And a strike. Wallace, hard hit to first, stays fair. Oh, no, nope, foul ball, according to James Colsey. Very close, travel piece fielding that just right of the chalk. Skyler Wallace catching a break. You know, with a competitive player like her, a little bit frustrated, I can imagine, being 0 for 2 and, and having a quiet bat on Monday night versus LSU Tigers. You saw her, her Instagram posts, speed kills, so still 
still happy about that win, but you see here this ball just gets fouled. It's a little bit hard to see at this angle, but. Did Wallace go around? No, says third base umpire Robert Guest, very close. This is a key inning here for Dixon, facing the top of the lineup. Another look. Very close. <laughs> I saw the cap. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. But but a, a good break indeed for Skylar Wallace right now, looking for some confidence going into the latter half of the season. Six runs for the Bulls in the top half of the fifth. Gators trying to fight back. They put up three runs in the fourth. Wallace average still at 435. That hits her. She's led the team of being plunked this year. Kind of gasp on that one. <laughs> You've seen what six hit by pitches today. It's been it's been a it's been a hit by pitch fest. All smiles for Skylar Wallace giving her team an opportunity with one out. I'm not sure how aggressive you get either, down three runs in terms of trying to take off. Here's Corby Otis, 0 for 2. Distributions of outs here for Peyton Dixon has four strikeouts, seven outs in the air, two on the ground. It's mixed her pitches really well. Indeed, going to that curveball, zipping across. She actually struck Skyler Wallace out on a plate that wasn't even as competitive as you think, but her break is just so deceptive coming across the plate. But that backdoor curve is a beautiful pitch. Crosses over the chalk, of the lefty batter's box, and just drops right over the black of the plate. Count evens out. Dixon had a great start in the best win that they had this year against Michigan. That would change if they win tonight. When a complete game three hitter threw a shutout against Michigan, he was receiving votes in the top 25 at the time. Otis reaches for this. Dixon bobbles. It's loose. Brooks has no play. Wallace gets back. And usually you're taught right, Alicia, as a pitcher to kind of try and get out of the way as much as possible. Well, I think it all depends. <laughs> a lot of pitchers do, but I think as a lefty with Brooks playing so far back, Peyton has no other play but to grab that ball and try to make an out. I think if she would have gotten in front of it a little bit better, would have had a, a better opportunity, but now with the Gators, I mean, don't count them out. Now, on second glance, that's definitely her ball. Wasn't too far away from the circle, and here's Jocelyn Erickson. Represents the tying run. That's all it takes for the Florida Gators. When you're playing any team who's, who's been producing offensively, cannot give up those free passes, those errors hit by pitches, those walks. You saw that last half inning with the Florida Gators, Ava Brown and Rothrock. Erickson ahead in the count two and one. You look at recent memory in SEC play, the Gators have had a couple of comeback wins of note. Down four runs in the fifth inning against Mississippi State, came back to win seven to six. LSU on Monday night down four runs. That off the plate, ball three. Down 5-1 heading into the bottom of the sixth against the Tigers. You could hear a pin drop in this place. They came back to win 6-5. Big part of the transfer additions Tim Walton brought in to bolster this lineup. Ball four. Five pitch walk to Erickson. Base is now loaded, so the Gators trying to return serve here. And now it's Reagan Walsh. I think when you're down, especially by more than one run, you have to practice patience. 
allow the ball to cross the plate. Don't try to be too anxious. In this case, she allowed the ball to come to her, grabbed a walk. Now, base is loaded in no time for the Florida Gators. That's a grand slam this year that came in the Kentucky series in game one. Walsh has an infield hit, grounded out to second. A one. Popped up lazily to first. Tribal piece is over to make the catch for out number two. That's a huge out for Peyton Dixon. Talked about her mixing pitches earlier. This one jammed her a little bit. At the end of the bat on that one. Now it's Goddard who's been hit twice. This time working that outer half for strike one. Power was off the charts in the preseason entering this year. Rehabbing from the knee injury. It's always tough to come back from injury. Physically, you know you've got the tools, but it's the mental aspect that I believe is, is most challenging when you're coming back. Goddard lines this, foul. And also, too, during that pitch, the lighting on the video board went down a decent amount. I'm sure that might have played tricks a little bit on Bailey Goddard. It was right before the pitch. Could have, there he goes, yeah. went back up. <laughs> that can't be good for a hitter. Big one, two. Just a little bit low. Good holds by Bailey Goddard. That's why the Florida Gators have been so good at coming back as of late, because they have so much patience in the box. Count full runners will get a jump. Coach Walton lets everybody know just that. You're off and running at the pitch. Dixon is ready. Goddard's ready. The payoff is skied in the air. Fouls left field side. Brooks is over, and she's got it. And the Gators leave them loaded. And South Florida celebrates. In the sixth, trying to keep this a three-run game as Elliott yanks a line drive. Kistler cuts it off. Elliott going for two. The throw is well late, and a first pitch ambush from Olivia Elliott has a two-hit night. That's her fourth two-bagger of the year. And the ball's set up right away here in the sixth. And Olivia Elliott does a good job by driving this pitch. That's moving towards the outer part of the plate, getting it out in front, taking it to the right field line. Nine hits. For the South Florida Bulls, a team that came in hitting 247 as a group, but they thought they found their stride over the weekend against Memphis. And it turns out to have been the case. Bailey Drapola lays down a bunt. Miller gets out of the way. Brown fields. Williams covers. The out goes three to four. Down to third is Elliott. That's a really good heads-up play by Ava Brown. Textbook sacrifice to get the runner over, but as you can see, Olivia Elliott gets over quickly, but. Here's now Marissa Tribal Piece. Who had a big swing, an RBI double. In that marathon fifth inning, trending in the right direction. This staff knows she's a great hitter. Had a great season last year. Yanks this foul. And the message to her is you're not going to get the cookies, as they put it, down the middle to hit anymore. You're going to have to be a little bit more selective in what you swing at. Part of it, she just needs to relax a little bit more. Swats this in the air, out of play. Trying to get her to play a little bit more free. Not to get too upset when things don't happen at the plate. She's going to be an everyday player regardless. As a senior, perhaps turning a corner.
when you have that confidence from your coaching staff to tell you to just be free and you're going to be an everyday starter regardless of the outcomes, that should bring you a lot of confidence in itself to give you the freedom to just be free and, and swing through each pitch the best way you know how. Last year led the team in hits, doubles, home runs. Had a slow start to her Bulls tenure. It was two of her first 22 and then broke out after playing her former team in Michigan State last year. Now the Gators have to find a way to settle in with Olivia Miller who has thrown a pair of perfect games including one of those on South Florida's home field opening weekend. Trying to make the most Alicia of this opportunity for her to maybe audition for more innings in SEC play. Yeah, when you're, when you're pitching and you're trying to look for more innings, you have to take advantage of those opportunities. And right now with Olivia Miller, I got my Olivia's mixed up earlier <laughs> on, that, on that sack bunt, but you've got to take every opportunity, like you said, as an audition. And it's really hard to do, especially when you don't have many in your back pocket. You've got to figure out how to stay prepared in the bullpen. Strike three, inside corner. Tribal Peace does not like it. I just love the energy by Olivia Miller. Getting Tribal Peace on this inside pitch, this backdoor curveball that just comes across her knees. Tribal Peace did not like that, but I love the energy by Olivia Miller because that is a big out for the Gators. It's up to Alana Rivera. He's 0 for 2, has been hit by a pitch. Top hitter in this lineup, entering tonight. Coach Claudia spoke on just her leadership, not only in the box, but on the field and overall. This almost got past Erickson. Elliott at third, that could have been danger. Elliott led off this inning on a first pitch double. They've just been taking advantage of every opportunity. That's a four pitch walk to Rivera. So now first and third. And here's Ryan Eigeman. Get you the line on Brown, who got the start. Three earned runs against Ava Brown to her ledger on five hits, four and a third innings, no walks, three Ks, and then Rothrock came in, only got one out, entered a bases-loaded jam. That was in the fifth inning. Three earned runs to her ledger on three hits, two walks, and a strikeout, just really labored against this South Florida lineup. And then Miller came in, was able to get the final out of the fifth. After 12 batters came to the plate and six runs across. And now Tim Walton will enter the circle. Brian Eigeman. Bowles trying to make some history tonight. Have lost 27 straight against Florida. Last win, 2012 in this ballpark in the Gainesville Regional. It's been that long. There's ball three. I don't know about you, Kyle, but I, I like that pitch. I think Peyton Dixon's getting a lot on an outer corner, throwing that back door curveball. I'm going to see Miller get some of those too. Go. 
But regardless of the outcome of the game, I know South Florida's leading six to three, giving them confidence, just knowing that they can produce offensively, especially going up against Wichita State. He was top two in their conference, picked to win in the AAC. Eigenman gets a piece. Runner was taken off from first with 3-2-2 two, two out. Wichita State receiving votes in the top 25. And that'll be what South Florida's weekend looks like. They're now seven and eight in the American Athletic Conference. Three, two. Good A-B here. Eighth pitch of the at-bat coming up. That just shows grit for these Bulls. I mean, we've seen it all night, just scratching and clawing their way through. Get some hits on the board, doing just that. Roll through the left side, base hit. A two-out knock as Elliott comes in to score, and Eigenman comes through to make it 7-3 Bulls. That pitch just curving right into her wheelhouse. Take a look here. Olivia Miller coming in from the left side. That curveball doesn't get in enough, and Eigenman just throws her barrel to it. Gets enough to get between the 5-6 hole. Ten hits tonight for South Florida. This is the eighth time this year they've had at least ten hits. And I get to a Florida pitching staff that came in top 15 nationally in ERA. Served right to first, Brown snags it. And that will do it, a run comes in. It is so tough to hit a lefty, especially when they have a killer curveball on both sides of the plate. She's been mixing just exponentially well tonight with that off-speed changeup. The most hits the Gators pitching staff has allowed, it was 14 against Mississippi State. They've allowed 10 tonight through three pitchers. See the numbers for Kistler had a two run single. The first two runs of this game, the Gators were up three nothing after four. And then a six run fifth and a lone run in the sixth. And this place was bumping in the bottom of the fourth, and it's gotten a lot more <laughs> quiet here at KSP. And credit Ken Erickson and this crew. They've come in, and they are locked in offensively, and they have a really solid pitching staff. And, and by pitching staff today, you mean Peyton Dixon. That's right. <laughs> Ken Erickson, the longtime head coach, South Florida. Reigning American Athletic Conference Pitcher of the Week. Unleashes the 2-1 high. This is how the Gators got their rally going on Monday night. Able to get on with some free passes, load the bases. Eventually come back from four down. Kistler gets called back with a strike. Yeah, a similar situation here as they were on Monday night. Down four runs in the sixth. Kistler on corks on a ball to right field. That goes over the head of Elliott up against the wall. Kistler rounding second, heading into third and in sliding with a triple. Do not count them out. Katie Kistler opening up her hips to take this ball to right field, legging this one out. Gets the third base on a miscue on the wall. Showing so much energy starting this sixth inning out strong for the Florida Gators. It's now Alana Consolazio in right. So the ball went over her head. She's in right for Elliott. Kistler has a triple. That is the lone defensive change here for South Florida. Brown. Rips this just foul, almost got an extra base hit. 
And Kisser almost looked like a track star running around the bases. She did not stop her feet once running around. Long strides, completely seamless transition throughout the bases. That's how she was able to get to third base. Kistler's third triple of the year. Two strike pitch. Gators also entered today. That was their 15th triple as a team. That's most in the SEC. Strike three. Outside corner, Dixon battles back after giving up the triple. And Brown down looking. We'll see if the Gators will go to a pinch hitter here in the nine spot. It will be a Bernard. I guess they're just entering her back into the game to hit here in the nine spot. You see the pitches by inning. Last two have been somewhat of a grind. 30 plus in the fourth and fifth. Fifth strikeout, meanwhile, for Dixon. It's Bernard who gets entered back in. In the nine spot, she started in this spot at first. That backdoor curve is just extremely challenging to see as a right-handed batter. It's coming from the left side, but it's also bending so much. These, righty, these righties can't necessarily see it. Bernard pops this up, tribal piece down the line. And when they do, they're either popping it up or, or grounding it out. It's the latter half of the game. Kistler still at third after the leadoff triple. And now it's Kendra Falby, top of the lineup. Down four runs. Peyton Dixon, the unflappable redshirt sophomore. Falby will get a ribby single. Drives this through the left side as Kistler comes in and the Gators get one back. And it's now 7-4 in the sixth inning with two outs, brings Wallace to the plate. I'll put money on Kenja Falby up at the plate with a runner in scoring position. This is nothing new to her. Came up first pitch swinging. And Kistler now getting through home plate. Wallace first pitch pops up to second, and that will do it. So the damage is limited from the fifth inning on. Melissa Reno in a pinch hit spot, loops this over. Wallace goes off her glove into shallow right field. First pitch hack and a leadoff single. A pinch hit spot for Alyssa Reno. That's her second hit of the year and her just fourth at bat. She's coming up swinging. Lands in no man's land. I think Mia Williams had a good beat on it, but just enough to get it past her. Garcia Soto enters back in to run it first. And just three outs to get from, I would assume, an ultimate celebration in that dugout. Now it's Jordan Cadlove. And after her, top of the lineup. Cadillac trying to get that sack down and get some insurance runs. Florida's no stranger to coming back after having a deficit. So you never know. Cadillac lays it down. Wooten fields, fires, Walsh covering. Get you the Gators' defensive changes. Brooke Bernard, who started the game at first, she's now at third. Reagan Walsh has moved from third to second. So Williams coming out of the game. And the rest remains the same for the Gators. There's Walsh at second. That's where she played just about every game last year. She's just so athletic. The ability to move across the field and play different positions. is a blessing. I mean, you come in and, and you can hit. Coach is going to find a spot for you. See Bernard at third base. Sure if we're going to have a pinch hitter here for South Florida. 
Alex Wilkes. Well, hit for Alexa Galligani at the top of the lineup. Wilkes, 286. 18 of 63 at the plate. And it's made 19 starts this year, so it's been pretty much a part of the lineup more often than not. The 28th game. Nice changeup. He just pulled the string on that one. I think I, I, my knees buckled up here in the booth <laughs> on that one. Kenzie Wooten is in PT school, physical therapy school, so they only get to work with her at specific times of the week. Essentially, it's school all the time and pretty much softball on the side. Hundred and eleven career innings transfer from Virginia. Pitched in just five games last year with the Cavaliers. Most innings pitched came in the twenty one season, forty two and two thirds. She go around, no. One and two and two now on Wilkes. That was a close one. I mean, you're gonna see that out of Wooten, that drop ball. She comes in with, with a curve ball to start. Tries to get her on that drop ball. It's a close one. I didn't see Cav this time. <laughs> That's the indicator. Yes. Driven it in the air, center field. Kendra Falby is over. Garcia Soto just bluffs it second. And we talked about Kendra Falby's arm in center field, how she has a great one that kind of goes under the radar a little bit because her hitting is so good. But Kathy knowing not to test the arm of Falby over at second base. Here's the red-hot Olivia Elliott. Last two times to the plate, a single and ripped a first pitch double. Here smacks this foul. Have to sense that heart is racing right now for Peyton Dixon in that dugout, three outs away from a night this program will never forget. Three, four, and five, two up for the Gators in the seventh. There's that floating change. She wanted it. Just a little bit too high in the zone. Olivia Elliott has led this team in total bases. Tied for the team lead in walks. Golfs this to center. That should do it. Falby makes the grab, and the Gators have three outs to play with. South Florida is three outs away from an historic night for the Bulls. They scored six in the fifth after the Gators had a 3-0 lead after four. They've tacked on one since. They have 11 hits tonight. All four Gator pitchers have thrown. It's Otis to lead off. Otis, Erickson, Walsh slated for the seventh. Against this cardiac Gators lineup that has had the flair for the dramatic of late. And the first three are out. Peyton Dixon on the verge of the biggest win of her young career. Peyton 
Ian Dixon just trying to find the zone right now. Three straight balls. That last one I think was just a little bit high in the zone, but staying composed throughout this last inning I think is key for her. Has battled back to make the count full. And time is called. Roll to the left side, Corby Otis tries to start a Gator rally. Peyton Dixon getting behind in this at bat and being forced to throw the ball over the plate a little bit more than she typically would if she was ahead. But a really good at bat by Corby Otis just driving this pitch in the 5-6 hole to start the Gators off with hopefully a rally for them. Gators need one more run to bring the tying run to the plate. This time, Dixon deals strike one. And if I want anybody to be up in the box right now, I want the SEC RBI leader, Jocelyn Erickson. Oh, and two. Look at the top left of your screen. Almost 130 pitches for Dixon. She just eclipsed a season high in pitches thrown. And an 0-2. Two-time Delaware State champion. Erickson got jammed, sky high pop up in back of first. Tribal piece has got it for the first out. And a big one by Peyton Dixon, just utilizing that curveball on both sides. Opening up that inside corner for her after that really wide curveball to try to get her to swing on 0-2, but does and jams her for the first out of the inning. Gigantic first out. South Florida has lost the last 27 to the Gators. Walsh takes low. There's been some close ones in there. Some one nothing losses, two nothing losses. Especially during the Georgina Coric years. Now it's Peyton Dixon's turn, biggest night of her softball life. Walsh to short, second to one, turn to first. An historic night for the South Florida Bulls. They've not. Change and the progress we make in the journey of life It's the path we take from the old to the new With ever evolving in the cycle of growth We keep revolving, change can be daunting It can make us afraid, but it's also the fuel For the progress we made through the twists and turns We learn to adapt and embrace the changes without looking back Change and progress, they go hand in hand In the journey 
of life Where we make our stand with every step forward We leave the past behind In the pursuit of progress in the depths of our mind From the inventions of old to the technologies of today We're constantly innovating in every single way From the streets we walk to the skies we saw Progress is the engine that drives us more But progress isn't always linear It's a winding road with ups and downs and unexpected loads Yet through perseverance and determination strong We push through the challenges where we belong Change and progress, they go hand in hand In the journey of life where we make our stand With every step forward we leave the past behind In the pursuit of progress in the depths of our mind Embrace change and strive for progress Let's remember the journey and all that we possess For in the dance to change And the song of progress will find our purpose And our hearts will digress Yeah In the melody of life let's keep moving on In the pursuits of progress where we belong For in the journey of change And the path we trod will find our way forward To the promise of God